Hello, welcome back. So far, you have learned how to use historic financial data to help you evaluate the performance of a company. And combined with the current financial market data, we can also analyze whether or not a company, a stock, is a good investment. Now we're going to turn our focus to the future. Once we have gathered historic uh, accounting data, we can use that data to help us determine what should the future direction of the company be. And this is really, in essence, the most important job of a financial manager. We make informed decisions, and informed in this case means using available accounting and financial data to help us plan for the future. Growth is a very important part of any company. So in this unit, we're going to focus on the growth capacity of a company. Um, so we want to look at what are the drivers, what are the determinants of growth. And in addressing this question, we're going to look at growth um, from a very particular metric or different uh, benchmark. By setting different benchmark, it helps us ask the really important question um, in terms of what is uh, what is the growth prospect of the firm both in the short run and also in the long run. Uh, so first we're going to take a look at a concept called internal growth. Uh, the term internal here refers to the funds that is available to allow a company to grow. So in order for a company to grow, you may need new equipment, you may need to build a new building, and all of those requires money. So internal here means that the funds that we will use for growth is generated internally. So what do we, what do we mean by internally? Where do the money come from? Well, Internally here means that the funds, the, the company that grow by this strategy will not seek any external funding of any kind. So no external funding means no new borrowing. So you will not take on new debt. And you will also not issue any new equity. So all the funds that the company used to finance growth in this strategy will come strictly internally. Internally means through operations of the firm. So where did the money come from? Well, the two main driver is profitability. The more profitable a firm is, the money will, more money will be able to generate. And then the second is efficiency. Uh, so this can, will come from total asset turnover. The more efficient a company is, the more funds it can generate. And then lastly is dividend policy. How much money will the company pay out to stockholders versus reinvesting in the firm? Again, the less the company pay out, the more the company reinvests. Again, the more funds will be available for growth. So those are the three factors that determines the internal growth capacity of a company. Next, we're going to look at a concept called sustainable growth. Again, the term sustainable here refers to the sources of fund. So sustainable here simply means that the company will not issue new equity. So uh, what it really means is what level of growth is sustainable given the current amount of equity that the firm has. Since the firm, own, the only restriction is no new equity, a firm will actually be able to continue to borrow, and that also includes new borrowing. So continue to borrow, including new debt, but it will be limited to the current debt ratio. So as long as the company doesn't change its leverage ratio, so the ratio remains the same, and the company can can issue new debt. So remember that when a company reinvests money in the firm, those reinvestments occur in the form of additions to retain earnings. So if you have an equity multiplier of say 1.2, then every dollar of retained earning you you keep in the firm will enable the firm to have to borrow 20 cents and not change its debt ratio. So that's what sustainable growth means. Sustainable growth is the maximum amount of growth that a firm can finance on its own with no new equity.
So an, a additional factors that impact the growth capacity of a firm when we are looking at a sustainable strategy is the amount of leverage that the firm use. So if you choose an optimal debt ratio, that will allow you to determine how much growth can a firm achieve without issuing new, new stock. Very important to emphasize here is that these are not limit. These are just strategy that manager can choose to follow. The goal of a financial manager is not to avoid borrowing. The goal of the financial manager is not to avoid issuing new stock when it is prudent to do so. So if a firm determines that its ideal growth, its optimal growth, is higher than the internal growth rate, is higher than the sustainable growth rate, what that simply means is a firm has to issue external equity. The reason why external for equity has carried such a high uh, benchmark is because it's typically very expensive to issue new stock. And even for a smaller company, say a, uh, an LLC or a partnership, bringing on new partners can change the dynamics of a firm substantially. So it can be even more disruptive than a large company issuing new stock. For a large company issuing new stock, is cost is very costly, but if the project that a company embark on is is valuable, then the cost is justified. So, very important, uh, the framework of an internal growth strategy, a sustainable growth strategy, is really there to help us see the different level of benchmark, but then they should not be limiting factors. If a company has a very good project, a very valuable project, by all means the firm should issue external equity to help us finance that. So uh, the next part of this unit, we're going to look at how to compute the internal growth rate, how to compute the external growth rate. And then the last part is going to look at financial planning that tell us what level of funding do we need and therefore also inform us what level of external equity we may need in order to finance the growth. One area we have not spent a lot of time looking at is the reinvestment decision of a firm. Uh, we can look at the, pay the payout ratio versus the retention ratio. Payout here refers to dividend payout ratio. So the reinvestment decision is how much does a firm pay out in terms of dividend versus how much a firm retains its earning for reinvestment. So the dividend payout ratio can be computed as a cash dividend divided by net income. Uh, again, if you have preferred stock, you may have two different ratios. You have preferred dividend payout and you have common stock payout. Um, but the important thing is a distinction between cash that, go, that leaves the company in the form of dividend versus um, cash that stay within the firm. This is the total amount. Uh, alternatively, if you use a per share basis, so DPS here stands for dividends per share, and EPS here stands for earnings per share. And both numbers will give you exactly the same answer because we are either dividing the total dividend by total income or the per share dividend by the per share earning. Of course, they will give you exactly the same number. And in our example, dividend was $20,000 and net income is $171,550. And our dividend payout ratio is 11.66%. What that tells us is that for every dollar in net income that the company generates, it pays out 11.66 cents in dividend. In other words, it keeps 88.34 cents as retained earnings. And that part we call the retention ratio. So retention ratio is one minus the dividend payout ratio. So in our example, that is 88.34%. So there are two ways you can compute the retain, retain, retention ratio. Another way is we take additions to retain earnings and divide that by net income. So again, the, the, the important information we are trying to gather here is how much of income we pay out and how much income we keep for, reinvest, for reinvestment. 
Once we have determined our, pay, our dividend policy, we can look at the uh, growth rate benchmark. The first growth rate benchmark we're going to look at is the internal growth rate. So internal growth rate tells us, remember, that it tells us how much a firm can grow with no new debt and no new equity, so only internally generated fund. The internal growth rate is defined as ROA, which is return on asset divided by the retention, uh, mu I'm sorry, multiplied by the retention ratio. So B here is the retention ratio. So as you can see, the higher the return on asset, the high N, the higher the ret retention ratio, the higher the growth rate. Um, this formulation of the internal growth rate um, has it divide that by 1 minus the ROA times B. There are other textbooks out there that um, do not have the denominator, where the internal growth rate is defined only by the numerator. Uh, but our textbook use um, this set of formulation. Uh, the, sum, the difference between the two is typically really minor for a company that has a uh, relatively low return on asset. So using the information that we have computed, we can find what the internal growth rate is. So remember in our earlier example, we have computed the internal uh, the return on asset to be 5.54%. In the last um, slide, we computed the internal uh, the retention ratio. So in this particular example, the internal growth rate turns out to be 5.15%. What that tells us is if the company decided that it is going to grow using no new debt and no new equity, the most that this company can achieve in terms of growth is 5.15%. So as an investor, that's also very valuable. You can look at this company's uh, operations and you can project whether or not this growth rate without new stock and without new debt um, is sufficient for the firm's competitiveness. Next, we're going to compute the sustainable growth rate. The sustainable growth rate is defined as the growth rate that a company can achieve with using only internally generated funds supplemented by borrowing at the current debt ratio, but it will not issue any new equity. So the key here is that there is no new equity. The difference between the sustainable growth rate and the internal growth rate is that the sustainable growth rate is based on ROE, which is return on equity, whereas the internal growth rate is based on ROA, return on asset. And the key difference between ROA and ROE is leverage. So remember that this company has a slightly higher ROE, 6.98%, because it uses leverage. So you will expect to see a higher sustainable growth rate. In this example, the, extent, the sustainable growth rate is 6.57%, which is higher than the internal growth rate. Again, the difference here is due to leverage. So for this company, for every dollar you generated in earnings, you will retain 88 over 88 cents in, in retain earnings for future growth. And when we are looking at sustainable growth rate, they'll also allow the company to then borrow um, money to, to supplement the 88 cents because the company has a debt ratio. So th then that is the reason why we are able to have a higher sustainable growth rate because the firm does borrow money uh, compared to the internal growth rate. So in the next video, we're going to look at financial planning and that will tell us whether or not the firm will need to issue new stock um, in order to achieve its ideal growth. From an investment perspective, you are evaluating a firm, and let's say you, identi you have identified a firm, and you think a firm is a good investment has good investment potential. You may want to go ahead and also compute the sustainable growth rate to see whether or not that growth rate um, is consistent with your estimate of the company. So, if you have identified a valuable investment. And in order for the firm to fulfill its promise, it may need to have a growth rate of, say, 5% per year indefinitely.
globally. And you, if you see that its sustainable growth rate is 6.57%, that will confirm your analysis that this indeed is a good investment and the firm has a sustainable growth rate that is consistent with your analysis. We'll end this video here.